In this lab, we will study one phenomenon of electromagnetism, which is called electromagnetic induction. So we already know that when we put current in a coil, we produce a magnetic field. But can we do the reverse process? That is, uh, we have a coil with no current in it, and we apply a magnetic field, and then can we get a current from that? We know that we can get a magnetic field from a magnet, uh, which can be approximated as a dipole a magnetic moment. But it turns out that if we put such a magnet next to a coil and nothing moves, then there will be no current created. However, if the magnet is moving, has a velocity, then that will produce a current on the coil. Actually, the magnitude is not zero, but the direction uh, will depend on the orientation of the magnet and also uh, on the velocity vector. Faraday's law tells us that there is an electromotive force uh, which is produced by this variation of the magnetic field on the coil and therefore produce a current. This electromotive force producing a current is measured in volts and is uh, given by the opposite of the time derivative of the magnetic flux through the surface produced by the coil. Now, of course, because you produce a current, you are also going to produce a magnetic field. And the sign here tells us that the magnetic field which is produced by this current is always going to opposite uh, the magnetic flux induced by the magnet moving uh, through the coil. So that's how we determine which direction we actually have for the current induced by the motion of the magnet. Now in theory, if we assume that the magnet is a perfect dipole moment, we can work out what is the expression of the magnetic field in each point of space. And assuming that the magnet is perpendicular to the surface of the coil and also uh, moving through uh, the center of the coil, we can determine the expression for the flux. If you want to know how we get this uh, expression for the magnetic flux, have a look at Kingman et al. in this reference. Um, the minus sign here, which is not in Kingman et al., is because of my choice of uh, to put the north side of the magnet uh, up and uh, for the magnet going down to water coils. Uh, we also uh, have defined the radius of the coil to be A and the height of the magnet with respect to the center of the coil uh, to be z. Now, if we have more than one coil, say we have n coils, this magnetic flux will simply be multiplied by n. But this magnetic flux is not enough. As we see from Faraday's law, we have a time derivative of the flux, and therefore, uh, for this to be non-zero, we need to have the magnet to move through the coil The electromotive force here is obtained assuming a constant velocity v of the magnet. In both these equations, m uh, is the magnetic moment of the magnet and quantifies the strength of the magnet and therefore the intensity, uh, the amplitude of the field, of the magnetic field it produces. So if we fix the radius of the coil a, the velocity of the magnet v, 
and its magnetic moment m, we can plot v as function of z, z the height of the magnet above the coil. And if we search for stationary point for V, that is when the derivative is zero, uh, we can find the maximum and the minimum of V as function of Z. And we should find that this occurs at uh, minus A on two and plus A on two. So again, all these equations can be found in this paper. So in the lab, we, you will test these equations. Um, and what you will do is to drop a magnet through a number of coils you will have produced with uh, different radii. So you will probe uh, these equations uh, for different velocity of the magnet, different radii, different number of coils. And to measure the electromotive force, you will uh, use an oscilloscope which will um, give you this sort of signal from which you will be able to determine these quantities. And as usual, you will need to be careful with the uncertainties. You will need to evaluate them and try to reduce them as much as you can, for instance, by repeating measurements. This lab is also the opportunity for you to write your formal report for this course. Um, and in addition to the logbook record, which you will use uh, as a basis to write your report. So in order to get some idea of what to put in your in your lab report, uh, I encourage you to look in Wattle where we have given some lab report guidelines as well as a marking uh, criteria. Um, and in, in short, your lab report should contain several sections. Uh, in total, it should not exceed four to five pages. Uh, it should start with an abstract. The abstract should contain a brief summary of the problem you studied, what you did, what you found out, and its significance. And it's very short, so it should not exceed 50 to 100 words. You then need to give an introduction uh, where you uh, give a brief summary of an irrelevant theory and the reason for doing the experiment, the aim, why you did it, and what is the motivation, what are the practical uh, potential applications of this experiment, etc. The next section details the experimental method and in particular what you did uh, and be careful that it should not be a recipe book. So you should avoid um, just a list of things you did with dot points and things like that. Uh, instead, make sure you write everything uh, using the past tense, passive voice, and in general, using plain English. You then present your results, uh, for instance, graphs, uh, or, and or tables uh, with your results. Uh, make sure that you include all units and uh, uncertainties. The analysis and discussion section can be combined with the results section or be a separate section. This is where you discuss your main results and whether they agree with the background theory you discussed in the introduction. This is also where you will discuss any interesting or surprising results you didn't expect. And um, that's also where you will compare your results with pre previous measurements or accepted values. And also how, where you will discuss how the experiment could be improved. You should then give a very brief uh, conclusions which summarize your main results. And uh, at the end of your report, you should have a list of references. But keep in mind that this is not a bibliography and this means you need uh, to only include uh, references which you cite in the main body of your report. And finally, you can include appendices if necessary.